Australia is fortunate in that it's located in a perfect position within the Indo-Australian tectonic plate to protect it from many of the extremely dangerous natural disasters that places such as the US or Indo-Asia face. Events such as major earthquakes, tsunamis, or the more larger dangerous volcanic eruptions released by subduction-related volcanoes such as Mount St. Helens or Krakatoa don't occur here. And yet the last time a volcano erupted was within the past 5,000 years in South Australia. And this volcanic eruption was definitely dangerous, as it was quite an explosive event, albeit to a different degree than the volcanoes that I just mentioned a moment ago are. What's even more amazing is when you learn that this isn't some random occurrence. Australia has been volcanically active for the past 31 million years, give or take. But why? And if it's volcanically active, why is barely anything known or spoken about regarding our volcanoes? As a person who grew up in the Australian education system, I can honestly say I can't remember Australia's volcanism or even the word volcano being mentioned in my late high school years, which scores a 0 out of 10 in my books. At least teachers in primary school got us to make a paper mache volcano. The craziest thing is the very place I grew up had a feature that I used to ride my bike near as a kid all the time without even realising it was a volcano. And the entire landscape was basically one rock and one rock alone. Basalt. All I saw. Basalt. Basalt here. Basalt there. And then when I went to the goldfields and saw quartz for the first time, my child mind was blown. Anyway, the fact is Australia has been completely altered by these volcanic eruptions. They stretch from the northern part of Queensland, beginning 31 or so million years ago, all the way down to Victoria and now beyond it with volcanic eruptions likely to begin in Tasmania in the next few million years. So in this video, we're going to take a look at how Australia, a seemingly tectonically stable country, could experience the scale of volcanic eruptions that it has in recent history. Long-held belief to explain Australia's volcanism was that the tectonic plate, which is slowly moving north and is on a collision course of Indonesia, drifted over a mantle plume, which is a mass of hot, buoyant rock that is upwelling on mass, releasing tremendous amounts of voluminous basaltic magma that is seemingly inexhaustible. This is definitely still partly true to some degree. Australia is definitely drifting over something that is static, and the way we know this is that volcanic eruptions have been steadily moving south as Australia drifted increasingly north. But recently, the long-standing theory that tried to explain the origin of these volcanoes was shown to either be incorrect or missing some crucial detail. There's two names to describe the hotspots fueling these eruptions. Some scientists think it was more than one hotspot, whilst others think both are one in the same. Personally, I've always used these names interchangeably, as I personally think it's only one major hotspot that exists beneath us. The first is the Cosgrove hotspot, and the second is the East Australia hotspot. The problem is, recent in-depth ground scans that mapped this plume revealed it to have a shallow origin. This is bad, because our idea of mantle plumes are just that, they come from the mantle. This is more like a crust plume, and this has completely messed with our understanding of everything. Something strange is going on beneath Australia, and we aren't too sure what it is. We only have part of the picture, but it's definitely a plume of some sort, but it doesn't stretch deep in its origin. Regardless of what it is, the fact of the matter is that Australia has drifted over a hotspot. Hotspots are pretty common. We know about the one that makes up Hawaii, as the Hawaiian Islands themselves also drift over time. And if you look on Google Maps, you can see the eroded older versions of their ancient self as they continue to move ever more. Yellowstone in the US is another example of a hotspot, as the location of this plume has slowly changed over time as the US has continued to drift. The volcanoes in Australia released a mixture of effusive and violent explosive eruptions as they moved south. In Queensland, we have intrusives and the remnants of major basaltic lava flows, along with falsic and intermediate volcanic eruptions that released andesite and rhyolite and were very explosive and quite dangerous to be around. Many incredible volcanic sites, like the Undara lava tube, were created by this hotspot and the recent eruptions. 
But along with this, we also have alkaline magma being released. This can happen in some other events, such as ocean island volcanism and in continental rift valleys, but they are a signature trademark of hotspots, as they release this magma quite readily, much more commonly than subduction related volcanic arcs, which will typically only see this type of magmatic composition occurring in the back arc basin and away from the arc itself. In New South Wales, we had the same. Tweed Volcano was a mixture of effusive and explosive eruptions, as were many of the other volcanoes as we drift south evermore. We have widespread volcanic activity at Warren Bungle and the Liverpool Range to name a few. The Snowy Mountains were also fueled by this hotspot and volcanic activity occurred around here too. Around 7 million years ago, it reached Victoria and things kind of changed because the intensity ramped up. Not so much in terms of the explosivity, although there were many explosive volcanic eruptions, with a number of them leaving behind caldera lakes as a result of magma interacting with shallow groundwater and creating explosions, but more so in terms of the voluminous amount of lava that was released, which literally changed almost half the state, burying much of the older land beneath up to 60 metres worth of basalt in some areas. And there are well over 400 volcanoes in Victoria, some of them highly eroded, others a kind of meh, to the point of being unnoticeable or even unrecognisable as a volcano to begin with to the untrained eye, and others are actually pretty big. All you need to do is travel through the Creswick area to see some absolute beasts, like Mount Karuchiang. Volcanism here released massive amounts of effusive lava, and like before, some of these eruptions were trachyte dominated, forming one of my favourite places in Victoria, Hanging Rock. The weird thing though is the fact that the only explosive volcanic activity that would occur in Victoria would only do so when basalt interacted with groundwater. So this begs the question, why are there no felsic explosive volcanoes in Victoria that were fueled by this hotspot like we had in New South Wales in Queensland? Well my theory is that the magma was able to ascend without much issue, and as a result of this, much of the old volcanic rocks that Victoria is comprised of didn't have the same level of melt occur, as a result of the pronounced weaknesses and new fault lines created by the Horst and Graben events that occurred when Victoria separated from Antarctica, which created the first ever north to northwest faulting event in Victoria. And when I looked at the spatial distance between the volcanoes, I can't help but notice a pattern here, and it looks like the volcanic eruptions themselves are in a line and are erupting from the areas most affected by the Horst and Graben events which is something that I'm very fascinated about, and I can't wait to show you guys some things that I've discovered relating to this. So, after passing through Victoria, the hotspot appears to be somewhere in the Bass Strait, and it's possible that it'll leave its legacy in Tasmania before finally slipping away from Australia's reach, where it will then go on to become an oceanic hotspot, and volcanic eruptions will appear on the ocean floor, as Australia continues its journey northward evermore. Thanks for watching.